Meantime, there's been little progress in helping Puerto Rico recover from Hurricane Maria. 80% of the island still without electricity, a third lack running water, and about 40% of people there can't get a cell phone signal. That has made it impossible for some to let family members outside the island know that they're okay. One local family just heard from their loved ones in Puerto Rico after nearly a month of wondering whether they had survived. Let's bring in Paula Tubman. She's live in our satellite center with really the mix of relief, but also helplessness, Paula. You know, Karen, I wanted to say this is a good news story, but it's one of those stories where at first you're holding your breath and then you get to breathe a sigh of relief. And then all of a sudden you stop breathing again. And then just a few moments before I went on the air, worse got even worse. It has been a 24 day agonizing wait for Sylvette Perez as she has waited for word that her mother, father and extended family in Puerto Rico survived the storm. Away from the populated city centers, her family lives in a mountain village, Camoy. We just knew for other people that, they, that there was no loss of lives in the part of the way we live. Last night at her Inkster home, 25 days after Hurricane Maria made landfall, Biddy Naves, found a sliver of a cell phone signal and called her daughter. The good news, everyone has survived. The rest of the news, that's where the good news stops. Social media has become the most reliable form of direct communication on the island. She's a teacher and they said the classes won't start until January, so the whole semester was gone. And so Sylvette's first look at her family's home comes family. from Facebook. They gave her like three bottles of water only you know, and, um, you know, like two or three cans of food. When I mean, for a family of five, that's not, you know, and they gave her like for a whole week. Today, she now understands that a desperate man will drink dirty water because fresh water is nowhere to be found. And so the family has been venturing into a nearby cow pasture to pull water from a deserted well. Is it safe water? No, it's not safe water, but that is the only thing they have. And what hurts most? is there's absolutely nothing Sylvette is able to do. The only way to ensure supplies get to family members on the island of Puerto Rico is to personally buy them, get a plane ticket, and personally escort those goods. Sylvette doesn't have the money to either buy supplies or money to buy a ticket. There have been uh, stealing in the postal services. There's been, if you send them yourself in a plane, there's been stealing in the baggage too. So. People are not caring about the other people's needs. They are just caring about themselves. So just before I went on the air, we got a call from Sylvette, and she's being told that the farm where the family is getting the water, that's where her brother-in-law works, by the way. They're actually shutting down. The brother-in-law will not get paid for the work he's done. He now no longer has a job. And Karen, they don't even know whether or not they will have access to that dirty water. <sighs> So it, it, I, 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 you don't even know how to help them navigate this. So it, it's it's I know it's so heartbreaking and you're right. You, you're trying to help and there just seems like everywhere you turn there's a dead end. Very very frustrating. Yeah. All right. Thank you Paula.